Good morning, Living Grace Church. Good morning. I'm Steve Bala. Good morning, Steve. Hi, Norma. <laughs> I'm an elder here at Living Grace Church. I also lead, lead the prayer ministry team, and I'm also a, a member of the worship team. So, well, I mean, you know, give glory to God. That's the desire to do. We all have a desire and gift to do. I also would like to thank Pastor Pat for giving me the opportunity to share a teaching with you today. So thank you, Pastor Pat. Today, this morning, what comes into your mind when I say the word hope? A hope, a hope, a, I wish, I wish, maybe, yes, possibility. Well, that's the world's thinking of what you think. Well, I hope this happens, you know, that emphasis. I hope, like, yes, maybe, yes, maybe, no. What I'm going to tell you today, I'm going to talk about Bible hope. Amen. Bible hope is different than the world's hope, definitely. And what I want to do today is tell you what it is, what it is not Bible hope, why it's important, how do we apply it in our life, and how do we continue in hope. Now, Bible hope is an earnest expectation of something of which there is no doubt at all. No doubt. It also, hope is also a desire. I like how this definition is, is entirely confident expectation with full assurance to the end. Isn't that amazing? I don't know if you ever heard that before with what hope is. I, I've never heard too many teachings or sermons on hope. We talk a lot about faith. You need faith, but if you don't have a hope, a hope, faith has nothing to attach to. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. In Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 6, Hebrews chapter 6, verses 11 to 12. And hope in the scriptures, if you go, depending on the version, it's between 120 to 167 times in the Bible. And it's also interwoven in the Bible without the word hope. If as you read certain scriptures, there's hope there. Hope, your desire, what your dreams are, what God tells you, the promises that you have. They're sure. They're not like, oh, maybe. No, they're sure. Uh, and what book of the Bible has the most words of the hope? Psalms. And the second one I found interesting was in the book of Job. Or Job. 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 So in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 11 to 12, and it says, And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. And the promises are around seven to 8,000 in our Bible. That'll keep you busy for an afternoon, won't it? <laughs> or more than that for the rest of our lifetime. God, God is, like I say, God is so good. He provides all it is for us. He's so wonderful. We just have to open up and receive that from him. So uh, when uh, many people, though, confuse hope and faith, they're focusing, thinking on meditating on God. Let's mo meditate on his promises, and that's hope. Faith is the power structure, the power that gives the hope the manifestation of it in our lives. It's, you could look at it this way. In uh, hope, as it says in Hebrews 11.1, 1, it says, hope is the substance of things hoped for. Or faith is the substance of things hoped for. So it, has to, it gives substance to that hope. So faith isn't what hope is, and hope isn't what faith is. If you understand what I mean. So if we go to... Uh, why, that's why hope is important, because you can't get it confused. Now, in the Old Testament, I think maybe this will give you a little uh, idea or a, a visual of what hope is. In the, in the uh, Psalms, it says, in Psalm 42, 11, Why art thou cast down, O my soul, David says, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. Wait on God. For I shall praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Now, our, our help, hope is in God, our great Redeemer, our Savior, our Shepherd. Now, these are wonderful passages in the Old Testament, and it's in the fulfillment of the name of Jesus. 
the name of Jesus. And Jesus means Yahweh saves. God saves. God heals. God gives you everything. God's so good. Yeah. Now, in one of the words in the Old Testament for hope is the word T-I-Q, tikva. I'm not sure if I pronounce it right, but it means cord, a cord. So when David says in Psalm 71, 5, for you are my hope, you are my cord, my God, from my youth. Now I'd like to give you a little uh, visual in, uh, illustrations here. Hopefully this works for you. Here's a cord or a rope. God's up here. He has the cord down for us. The word of God, all the things that you need. This is my hand or your hand down here. So he's on this end up here. Right? As long as we hold on to this cord, our hope, our salvation, our healing, our finances go on and on. Seven to 8,000 promises, we're there. Now, if we start to like not hold on, well, what are we going to do? We're going to go back into the scriptures. We're gonna, I'm going to suggest some things for here to get hope. But hope is in the scriptures. Hope is in the Bible. Hope is rehearsing what you, what, when you first became a believer. You hold on to that hope. Maybe sometimes, you know, when we get into things where, well, oh, gee, it doesn't look that good. Well, remember the time before when God took care of you. So that is a wonderful promise of the court. I hope that gives you some visual of, of how God, as long as you're holding on or holding on to what the hope is in the Bible. So in the Bible, it also says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, hope also comes through the scriptures. Okay, what, you're, what, you, what you see and what you visualize. So, um, and we also don't have a hard time rejoicing if you don't have hope. I know I was talking a few weeks ago and someone says, well, all these problems are happening. How, how could you rejoice? Yeah, if you have hope, but if you don't have hope, how could you rejoice? We're not rejoicing in rejoicing. We're, we're rejoicing in the Lord who gives us hope. There is hope. And this is, hope is a spiritual, faith, hope, and love work together. They're spiritual living forces. This is not of the mind. This is not of our will or out in the world, but this is spiritual, which is the most powerful thing, our spirit. As long as we get our mind, will, and emotions, our soul in ta in, 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 together with that. So these are all powerful. Rome, let's go. Romans 5, verses 1 to 5 says, Romans 5, verses 1 to 5. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that our tribulation produces perseverance, and our perseverance character, and our character hope. Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is given to us. And again, when you read hope, it's not hope of the world, it's hope from God. It's sure, it's definite, there's no doubt about it. You may have doubts come into your mind, but what do you want to do? Get back into the Word. Lord, show me. What do we do? How do I get back into hope or, or, or revive that hope? Because you all have faith. You're all given faith by God. The problem, I think, is, well, thing with a lot of people is maybe you don't, you're not focusing on the hope or your goal or your vision, healing, prosperity, issues in your life that come up that you need the hope that picture, that visualization of what, what you need, what God has given you. Uh, in Galatians 5, 6, it says, faith works by love. So you wouldn't put faith or hope in something you don't love, would you, or trust. Well, we all love and trust God because he saved us. So see how that all works together? And in 1 Corinthians, verse, or chapter 13, verse 13, it says, well, now abide faith, Hope and love. The greatest of these is love. But these all need to work together so they all come together. So as, as you read through the Bible, I see if the words aren't faith, aren't hope, aren't love, in any section you read, it's there. It's one of, one of the three or all of the three, even in the Old Testament. God has really provided a lot of grace for the people in the Old Testament, no matter how they acted or in sin or rejected God. So hope is not physical, 
but it is seen in our positive imagination. That's what you want to get. Imagination is part of your mind. So you want to get that focused in your mind. As stated in Isaiah 26.3, Isaiah 26.3, it says, and the Lord will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. Now, perfect peace, those words for perfect and peace, they're two of the same words. It's shalom, shalom. And shalom means safe, complete, health, prosperity, wholeness. Isn't that great? You know, as you focus on, on the Lord, He will keep us in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on us. And they emphasize that when the Hebrews uh, have the same word twice, one after the other, it's emphasizing that for you. In other words, pay attention. Pay attention. And it says here, and the word for mind is not the usual word for mind, but it's conception or imagination. And you've heard that word imagination. Usually when we say the word imagination, it's bad or negative. Well, we want a positive imagination. That's what hope is. You put in your mind what the scripture said about you, that you're healed, you're prosperous, you're wise, you have all these good things. You have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. We can go on and on. Seven to 8,000 promises God has given to you. You're forgiven all your sins, past, present, and future, and there's no condemnation. You're not condemned. No matter what you're going through, how, if you failed in the past, you're failing now, God loves you. He wants to impart that hope into you. Now, he's given us, we heard of the grace and the faith. Well, he's given the grace, or you can look at it as hope. Right? The, the, no, we as Gentiles before Jesus came, we had no hope, but the, the Jews did, and, but a lot of them didn't accept them. But now we have hope because Jesus came, and he's our hope. He's our, our prosperity. So this is how hope is applied. You use it in our lives to think about God, think about scriptures, think about good things. In Philippians 4, verse 8, Philippians 4, 8 says, what do we do with our mind? Think on things that are pure, lovely, honest, of good report, anything worthy of praise or virtue. In other words, good things. God, we want our minds filled up with good things. So you have a choice during your day. You may fill up your mind somewhat with good things of God, but what about the rest of the day? Now, you're not there like, say, 24-7, you're just reading the Bible. No, but where you go, you think about God. When you go outside, you say, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the sunshine. Thank you, Lord, for health. Thank you, Lord, for the green grass. Thank you, Lord, that all these... Thank you for the people that have life, that have an opportunity to accept you. Yeah. You could see God every, God is everywhere. everywhere. You know, He is. As you look at things, it depends how you... No, I'm not saying... Yeah, there are bad things out there in sin, but you don't focus on that. Right. So if you focus on that in your imagination, that's what you might get. And it's going to block what you hoped originally for healing, for prosperity, for whatever it is. You, you need to focus your mind on that and say, Lord, I just need to focus on that and, and know the hope that is you gave me that is sure because hope is sure. Bible hope is sure, yes. not yes. world hope. Well, I hope I get there. Like the, someone would say, well, no, that doesn't mean he may or may not get there. But we know God has given you salvation yes. as you've received it. So, uh, so faith attaches to hope. Now, if you go negative, that's what you get. You receive, and we've heard this before, uh, seed time harvest. And that's what, as we focus upon hope, you put seeds in there. You get that. And this doesn't happen overnight sometimes. For some people, it's sooner than others. With all the stuff maybe we've put in our mind and our imaginations, that has to be thrown out and take the garbage out and put in the good stuff in our mind, in our imagination. So imagination is good. Dreams are good. They're from the Lord, and we, we focus on that to bring that to pass, as faith will bring that to pass. Like when you go in the house, well, here in our house, in the church or in your house, all of us have air conditioning units. So what do you do? Well, when you go on, when it's too hot in here, so you go to the thermostat and you turn it to whatever, 78, 76. Well, that is hope. I want it to be 78, 76. So I want healing. I want my whole body restored. That's your hope. Well, what is faith? Faith is that power unit that's going to bring it to pass. Okay? So sometimes when we say, well, I don't, oh, the faith, I'm having a problem with faith. No, maybe have 
you need to get more hope out of the scriptures. You need yeah. maybe to renew your mind yeah. to things and remind yourself of how God worked in your life. Listen to video, uh, tapes or videos or other testimonies of hope, of healing, of, of uh, different things that have, people have gotten out of that were worse than you. Yeah. Gee, if God could get so-and-so out of this trouble, gee, mine's like nothing. You know, and we're all in this together. We all have different areas that we're working on, but God has given us the hope. So if you continue to hold on to that rope, that's the hope. It's in the scriptures. God has given us that. So oh, a good example of hope in the scriptures is Abraham. In Romans chapter 4, verse 17 to 22. Romans 4, verse 17 to 22. It is written, I have made you, God says, a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed. God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's woman. She was in her 90s. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, being fully convinced that what he promised, hope, he was also able to perform. And there's a lot here we can go about Abraham, but talk about someone who there was, as, as the world would say, well, what do you mean you're going to have a child and you're 100 years old? Your wife is 90-some years old. That's impossible. But nothing's impossible with God because God told them. What has God told you in the scriptures? What is salvation? Salvation, all your sins were forgiven, you're healed, you're, you're made whole, you're given wisdom. I mean, really, he's given us the whole ball of wax, right. as you heard, you know, old time saying, the whole ball of wax. Everything. Yeah. I mean, really, it's, it's all there. Now, our, our responsibility is, since God has graced us with all of this, he's given us the hope by faith and through what we see in the Bible, in reviewing what, how God has done in our lives, in our imagination. Lord, I, I see myself, no matter what's happened in my body, I see myself healed. I see myself walking. I see my house, myself running. I see myself, my mind is fully functioning. I, I have the mind of Christ. Yeah. No, none of this, well, I, I'm 90 years old and, you know, forget, no. You have the mind of Christ. You renew your mind to that. Things may be going on in the natural, but that's not the truth. You want the truth out of the scriptures. And get that hope in front of you. Get in the Bible. Get in the Word. Be encouraged by other people. Review what God has done for you in the past. So how do we stay in hope? Next one is, per Colossians 1, Colossians 1, verse 23. Continue in the faith. Colossians 1.23, continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and not removed from the hope of the gospel. Not removed from the hope of the gospel. And what is the hope of the gospel? You've already received the hope of the, you've already received salvation. All of us here born again, remember back to when you received the Lord. Wasn't it an exciting time? Yeah. It still should be exciting because we're continuing on. We're in the body of Christ. Right. I mean, when, when Jesus said, the greatest born of woman was John the Baptist, naturally. But he said, those that are of the least in the kingdom. If you consider yourself least, which I don't consider anyone here least, but if you were, you're greater than John the Baptist because he was considered the greatest prophet that Jesus said. Jesus said, not me, Jesus said, it's in the word. So my point is, is that get in the Bible, get your hope up. Healing's uh, an issue you're, you're fighting. You're, get, get your hope up. Go into those scriptures and get your imagination. Yes, I see myself walking in help. I see myself, I don't have any of this other stuff going on. It's going to take time. I'm not saying overnight you do it, overnight and next night, boom, like this. You know, sometimes that it's better that you're going to remember if it took you weeks or months or even years. You're going to always remember that, yeah. aren't you? If something happened like instantly, you may or may not, dramatic, yeah, I'm not saying we don't want in, instant miracles, but with healings, there is a time. But then God is working with you. Maybe he might even suggest things to you in the natural to do or not to do. 
with exercise, with food, and I'm not going to go down that trail. God deals with you individually. Or maybe even, too, with your mind, you're upset a lot or worry. Well, maybe some people you don't need to hang around with a lot. You know? I mean, we put our faith in God. Be encouraged by people of faith. You know, there's a lot of things out there you could be encouraged at. I mean, we sang here in the worship team, you can go online and get these songs and be encouraged. Just play them at home yeah. and sing along. Yeah. I mean, I sing along and it's like, well, raise the rooftop, you know? <laughs> you know, you, you could do it, you know, at home. You know, not just here with, with fellow believers, which is, it's great to encourage one another. So it's like, I know when I get in here up here, it's like I'm ready to like jump through my skin here, jump through the roof. You know, I mean, you know, that's my soul, but, you know, it's my spirit's being touched. Yeah. That, that's the whole point. This is a spiritual thing. This is not of the world. You know, God has given us hope. Get that, get that hope. I don't know. I like this. I don't even think I'm a little nerd. Get that hope. Get that hope going. The hope, hope, hope. So how do we do this? So we had what hope is, what it isn't, why it's important. How do we apply it? How do we get it more? Well, I already mentioned a little bit about it. Read, study, memorize relevant scriptures for your situation. Okay? Uh, on healing, on prosperity, wisdom. Healing, there's many, many healing scriptures. I mean, there's over 100, 200 script, scriptures about healing. And I know uh, 1 Peter 2.24, by his stripes or wounds, we are healed. We're already healed. I mean, we can go on and on, and that's not my point to go all these scriptures. You know some of them, but you know them here, but get them in your heart. Get them in your imagination. Just like Jesus is coming to you right now in your situation and said, you are already healed. And you just receive it. Jesus, you know, you, you receive it because the hope is in that healing. He says that's what it is, and what it is is hope is definite without a doubt. So you could latch on to that because he loves you. You know he loves you. So you imagine yourself healthy, wealthy, wise, and why don't you? Are there blockages there somehow? Like I mentioned, there, there are different things. Maybe you have to change the way, maybe way you eat or don't eat, sleep, associated with certain people. What do you watch at night? Are you on your, uh, are you on your computer or on your cell phone 20 hours and, you know, okay, God, I give you 15 minutes. I, I'm not, you know, I'm just saying, you know, Lord, show me how I, I want to draw close, closer to you because that's why he saved us. He wants a relationship with us. That's, that's what he wants. So, um, in Hebrews chapter 10, he, we'll go to a lot of Hebrews here. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32. It says, you need to remember and never forget. This is uh, from the Greek words. You need to remember and never forget what it was like back in the early days. How your eyes were opened and you really saw the truth for the first time. In other words, when you received the Lord the first time. You, you could remember back that far you know, kindle that up. Write it out. You, you know, Patty and I, we wrote out our uh, testimonies of how we came to know the Lord. Maybe you want to review that and write it down. Go, re, you know, whatever you remember. God, the Holy Spirit will give you a remembrance of that. that. That'll encourage you. You know, I felt after I received the Lord how many years ago, that was 1978, I felt clean inside. Now, everyone's not going to have the same experience of how that is, but it was like, boy, this is wonderful. You know, it's wonder. I mean, you know, that was an experience in my soul, but I know my spirit was, was healed that day, was given over to the Lord. And I had some ups and downs throughout the years, but, you know, God was, is always faithful to me. He's always faithful to you, no matter what you did or didn't do. And, and there's always hope, the hope of God, the hope of the scriptures. And, and that's so wonderful. So that's so important to, to review what God has done in your life. And be encouraged by other people, but it's probably more, it is more important, you relate to more your experience than someone else, <laughs> you know? And when you have a testimony, as you relate it to others, who's going to stop you of that, that hope that God has given you? Because we've all been from different circumstances, different areas. I came to the Lord because I didn't want to go to hell. I saw this on a paper. They were passing out in church. We sat in the back, and a big thing was, I was in a church where I was baby baptized, you know, sprinkled. And thing where we would be dunked, well, I call it dunking, you know, in the baptismal, and, and do it immersed. So, you know, and, and it was like, oh, okay. And it's like, God touched my heart. We came, we were way in the back in the church, and we just ran forward, and we were baptized right there because they had a baptismal thing back there. I, like I said, that was so, it was a wonderful, 
And, and God wants that continually. Of course we have things come against us. Jesus said you're going to have tribulations. I mean, you know, but when someone comes up and says, why are you still enjoying and, and really like have a good attitude and all you've gone through and going through now? It's the Lord. You know, not to say we, you know, I don't know what the problems are, but we don't focus on them. If you focus on your issues, your problems, your difficulty, again, you have negative hope. That imagination should be clear. You know, and, and some things that God is going to show you to get to that imagination. Again, back into the Word. You know, sing songs, get on YouTube, whatever God tells you, just to be encouraged, to be the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes. Yes. And it says in Scripture, that in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. In the presence of the Lord is healing. In the presence of the Lord is peace. All the good things, joy, faithfulness, gentleness. He's good. He's a good daddy. He doesn't, he, he's already judged your problems, your sins at the cross of Jesus over 2,000 years ago. You could come to him. And you're not condemned. We're all, we're all in this together. We're encouraging you here. You know, the teachings Pastor Pat has, Pastor Devon and others go, that come up here, they're here to encourage you from their point of view. You know, you, you could relate to some and not the, and to others, but you know who you, who you could relate with? The Lord. Yeah. Jesus. He'll meet your every need. You get in your quiet time. That's so important to get alone with God. I mean, you can get counsel from other people, but God gives you the pure, perfect, practical uh, wisdom that you need for your situation and no one else. And you know, we all gone through similar situations, but God just touches our heart in a, in a special way when we, we give our life over to Him. So what I want to say is that, you know, we're not just, well, God, I want, I want this, I want that, I want this. You know what? God wants you first. Because it says in Scripture, God provides for His own. Even, you know, what and two it says, we're to be a living sacrifice. So what does that mean? I mean, we can go, that could be a teaching itself, but we're giving ourselves to God. When we came to Christ, that's what we're doing. That's what we did, right? We give ourselves to God. And then God, Lord, show me, mold me, make me into your image. You know, and, and God, God knows our needs before we even say them. Like in prayer time, if most of your prayer is asking, 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 well, that, that's, you know, we want to pray. We thank, you know, a big thing I, I found out too is even before when we have things going on and ask God, and I just thank him ahead of time. Just thank him all the time. Thank him afterwards. Continually thank him. As it says in 1 Thessalonians 5, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. So you see how they all work together. You have to know God loves you, first of all. Are you in a relationship with him? Yes, you are. But get closer. Get closer. Closer. And he'll show you things that maybe someone else, and we were talking here Tuesday, Pastor Pat, about uh, the uh, gifts of the Spirit, how to, if you have a word for someone, God has a word for you all the time. Just special for you. You're special. Don't let anyone else say you're not. Out of the things that you did or didn't do or somebody's trying to say something negative, reject it. I mean, I don't yell at the person if they say something, but just, you know what I mean, say, oh, bless you, brother, bless you, sister, or just walk away or smile, you know. You know, but, but, you know, that takes, that's from the spirit. That's not of the mind. I mean, you know, in our mind and our flesh, we want to go over there and, you know. But the more and more you're with God, you're, you're going to get more of his thoughts. You're going to get more of the hope of God. Just being in his presence. He's going to provide. This last uh, week, the other week, we, were, we wanted some landscaping done. And I had in my mind a certain number that I, we wanted to spend, and we got four estimates. One, the guy didn't give us a written one, so we said, well, cut him out. And the one guy came, and it was like, boy, this is really a low estimate, and he wouldn't give us references. Then another person came, and it's like, wow, they, like, whoa, it was the price and all of this, and it's like, it was like the poor man, the rich man, and then the fourth one came, and it's like, perfecto, perfect price, and they did a wonderful job. And they were Christians, I mean, I, and, and they were even have men that were on the workforce that were in prison that were giving them a second and a third chance. And the one man who was the foreman came to our house and he says, you know, Steve, he's there. I, I've been on the bad side. It ain't good. Being on the right side, oh, it's so wonderful. And his smile, he says, it was so wonderful. And, and it's like, 
you know, because the way of the transgressor is hard. People that, you know, have it hard, well, maybe you think you have it hard. No, you don't. Because God loves you. In all situations, he could take care of it for you. And I'm not sure it's going to be instant, but God is able. He's able. You know, he's wonderful. I just thank him for that. It's like, thank you, Lord, for that the, the situation. I mean, you know, it's not a, quote, big thing for a lot of people getting bids and the money. But to me, that was a big thing. Then we went to get some material we had to get. And here is the only blocks were on sale. It's like, thank you. You know, thank you for the little things. You know, and that's all. Be thankful. Rejoice always. Because of hope, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. And that doesn't mean I ask, ask, ask. No, praying is also ask, or thanking God, being in communion with him. Oh, thank you, Lord, for this wonderful lawn I have, for this wonderful landscape. Thank you for the wonderful family I have. Even though there's, they're not perfect, no one's perfect. But in other words, you're seeing the future for them. In your imagination, you're seeing that son, that daughter, that grandson coming back to the Lord, being uh, just a wonderful uh, just uh, what I do sometimes, what I do when I, with the family or people that I know, when I, quote, thoughts come in, I said, Lord, as it says in your scripture, and I'm, I'm just confirming it, that I'm, I'm praying a wall of faith around them, an anchor of hope, the scriptures, and a blanket of love. Amen. You know, faith, hope, and love. I, I mean, really, in, in a way, it's like, God has said, here it is. And, and the, the, the thing is that sometimes we think, it's, we think it's hard or difficult because we're putting things in our mind. As we've said here before, you've heard sermons about we need to transform our mind. Well, that's also with the imagination. Yeah. You know? And it's not just, well, we say something. If you say something that's out of the scripture, but maybe you don't believe it yet, well, keep in the scripture. Hang in there. Lord, why? I said, it, it's, you said, by your stripes I'm healed, but I do believe it, but yet I don't. Well, get that imagination going. Go in those scriptures. Go where Jesus came. Everywhere he went, everyone was healed. The apostles, why? You know, so you're no exception. You're, you're already healed. Jesus said that you're already healed. Jesus said you're already prosperous. Jesus said you're always wise in all these situations you have. For jobs, for families, for how to deal with people. I mean, sometimes you don't even maybe have to say anything. Just put a hug around, hug someone, a smile. And they'll ask you, well, why are you like that? And then you can get to share with them. I mean, you know, this, sometimes, you know, we make it too hard to, like, relating to people. Because people have reactions to us, and then we react to them. Well, we want to react with the love of Jesus. Amen. Even, you know, I thought when Jesus was, was uh, he had such great love for everyone. But, you know, he, he spent a lot of time, he was patient with those Pharisees. You know, he, he just didn't say walk away from them, but he tried to share with them. He tried to open their eyes to the gospel, to the truth, to the love, to, to the repentance, to the right way that he is the savior of the world. You know, he had so much love for them, and that's all we should have for, you know what, sometimes we're, we get in issues where, God, why are you doing this? Maybe we have something against God because we don't think that he's done it. Well, he's already done it, so forgive God. Forgive others. Let, let things go. I mean, I mean, you don't defend them, but if you're thinking about that, and they're, they're so, you're connected to them in a negative way. So break that. And then third, I think a lot of people forgive yourself. Forgive, you, in your spirit, you're pure. You're, you're wonderful. You're lovely. We just get, get our mind willing, our imagination, our hope out there. Get in those scriptures. Find those scriptures of hope. In, in uh, Proverbs 29, verse 18, it says, Without a vision or hope, the people perish without hope. If you're hopeless, why do people want to pass on from this world? They have no hope. That's why some people just need to be listened to. Like anyone, we're saying like with teenagers or people, they don't want to be, know that you, you, you care for them. You know, if you have something you want to share with them, well, maybe listen to them. Maybe they have something you really need to help minister to them because you have the love. You have everything in you. Yeah. Something that you've gone through, you know, you can minister to another person with that. Yeah. And even if you haven't, you have the love of Christ in you. Yeah. You know, you're the body of Christ. You are. You're the body of Christ, of the Messiah, King of kings and Lord of lords. And in Romans 8, 24, I'm just... I uh, won't have to put that up. We are saved by hope. We rejoice in hope, Romans 12, 12. This is a good one. We're link this all up here. And we're going to get uh, finishing up here now. 
in Romans 15, verse 13. Romans 15, verse 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of Holy Spirit. Romans 15, 13. Isn't that beautiful? Just go over and over and add in your mind. You know, after the Bible, my second favorite book is the Strong's Concordance or a concordance where you can look up the words. You know, Gwen does that like with the Old Testament a lot. I mean, because a lot of times in the English translated, it's not, it doesn't give you the full, full uh, effect of what the word is in Greek or in Hebrew, just like I mentioned here before what these words are. So, you know, study those words out. So God has given you hope with joy. He's given us, the, he's the God of hope. So go to God. In his presence is full, is full of joy and hope. He's hope. That's sure. And in, uh, if you go to, uh, uh, where is that? Uh, you know, Romans 15.4, back up in Romans 15.4. Paul says, well, for whatever was previously written was for our instruction, the Old Testament, so that through perseverance and encouragement of the scriptures, that's the Old Testament, even. We might have hope. We might have hope to the scriptures. And I have something here that I can read. So that's Romans 15, 4. So we have hope in the scriptures. God is the God of hope. He's the God of love. And you heard that. You know that. But he's the God of hope. You know? So uh, what I... You want to hear some scriptures to uh, look at? I was looking at these these last couple of weeks, it's like, oh, I saw those before, but yet I didn't. You know, sometimes you read something and you really didn't see it. So if you go to, and I'm just saying suggestions here, Psalm 146, and then also Psalms, go Psalm 121 to 128, suggestions for you to just meditate on this week. So that's Psalm 146, you don't have to put that up, nor Psalm 121 to 128. And there's other scriptures, like I said in here, that for your situation you know, and if you don't know come to me later if you need scriptures on healing there's there's a lot of them out there i think you all know but you know again i'm going to get this from your mind into your imagination into your heart so when you speak you know steve how are you today i'm great i'm wonderful well i, I thought you said that there's something going on in your body somewhere. well yeah there is but god has given me i, I know i'm healed when that manifestation comes I don't, I'm not going to look at the time. What if it takes two weeks? So what? Well, then it's gone. I, I put my anchor. God, Jesus is our anchor, our hope in him. So those are some suggestions. Uh, I like to go and read at the end when uh, Jesus is talking to or saying, written, written about to his disciples in John chapters 14 through 17. John 14 through 17 is a good one to meditate. Ephesians 1 is a good one to meditate on. And 1 John 3, 2. This is one of my favorites. This is the one I, I really like of all time, for me anyway. Uh, Beloved, I wish above all things is my earnest desire that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers, spirit, soul, and body. He prays. That, that, that's God's will for you. That's the hope. The hope. So I hope this... I, <laughs> I want... See, we use sometimes, we inter interchange this. I want you to encourage you in the hope, faith, hope, and love, and that whatever issue you have, God has already taken care of it in the Spirit, and we just need to receive that from Him. Because God is so wonderful. He's so good. He's so patient with us, even when we're not doing what He desires us to do to know Him. So we need to get to know God, get in your prayer closet, get private with him and say, Lord, these are my needs. Shut them out to him and just love on him. Love on him. So why don't we uh, at this time stand. I want to pray. I want to, we, we want to get our imagination, our hope in God.